Hello viewers, welcome to this class. In the last class, we had studied the lesson Our Town by Thornton Wilder. In this class, we are going to study about the different characters, we are going to study the themes, motives and symbols in this play. The first character is the stage manager. He is an authoritative figure who resembles a narrator. He guides the audience through the play. The stage manager's character is unconventional in dramatic literature. He is simply not just a character in the play. He can also be considered as a member of the crew staging the play as well. He exists simultaneously in two dramatic realms. He identifies the play and the playwright and also introduces the director, the producer and the actors in the beginning of act one. Every act begins and ends with the stage manager's announcements. During every act, he frequently interrupts the play's action for the purpose of giving cue to another scene. He provides the audience with the information or comments on what has just happened or what is about to happen. All of these functions suggest that he is someone who works behind the scenes and he is neither an actor nor a character in the play. Sometimes he does occasionally assume the role of an inhabitant in Grover's Corners. For example, in Act 2, after narrating the action and giving cue to a flashback and changing the set to prepare for the next scene, he directly steps into the play and becomes Mr. Morgan, the drugstore owner who serves ice cream sodas to Emily and George Gibbs. Therefore, the stage manager is adept as changing sets as well as changing roles. And this versatility helps him to exist both within the play, in the world of Grover's Corners and also within the world of the audience. Wilder deliberately makes the stage manager's location in the play ambiguous because it is this ambiguity that allows the stage manager to connect between the audience and the characters on stage. The stage manager is essentially the audience's guide. He is the imaginary barrier between the audience and the action on the stage. He facilitates a dialogue between the audience and the content of the play. It is through the stage manager that the interaction between the audience and the play becomes a part of the content of the play. It is not clear to the audience whether the stage manager is a native of the town or is he an outsider who has been given privilege to view Grover's Corners. This uncertainty makes him both familiar and mysterious and eventually gives him a metaphorical role in the play, hinting at the presence of Almighty. Although the play avoids any discussion on religion, nevertheless Wilder hints that a spiritual force manages human life in the same way that the stage manager dictates the movements of the play. The stage manager makes many great demands on the members of the audience to be active participants in this play. His presence blatantly goes against the theatrical convention that has separated the audience from the events on stage. Our next character is Emily Webb. Emily is our town's most significant figure, with the exception of the stage manager. Her courtship with George Gibbs becomes the basis of the text's limited narrative action. These two characters thus become extremely significant not only to the events of the play but also to its themes. In Act 1, we see Emily displaying her affection for George by agreeing to help him with his homework. In Act 2, the audience witness Emily's marriage to George and the young couple's wedding becomes exemplary of young love. In Act 3, when the various themes of the play become fully apparent, Emily emerges as the main articulator of these themes. After her death, 
we see Emily joining the dead souls in the town cemetery and they begin to analyze earthy life and human beings from a totally new perspective. She understands that living don't understand the importance of human existence. Later, she goes on to relive her 12th birthday. Emily feels that human beings fail to recognize the impermanence of life and do not appreciate it while it lasts. This is the conclusion which Emily expresses with agony and she wishes to leave her birthday and return to the cemetery. Encapsulates the play's most important theme which is the transience of individual human life in the face of general human and natural stability. Let us move on to George Gibbs. George Gibbs lives his life in the dark unlike Emily's awareness, even if it is after her death, of the impermanence of human life. George is an archetypal all-American boy. He is a local baseball star and also the president of the senior class in high school. He comes across as a person who possesses innocence and sensitivity. He is a good son and sometimes, like many children, he once in a while neglects his chores. George hopes to inherit his uncle's farm and therefore plans to go to agricultural school, but ultimately scrapes that plan in favor of remaining in Grover's corner to marry Emily. Indeed, we see all of George's achievements prove less important to him than his love for Emily. She is George's closest neighbor since his childhood and he is one and he one fine day declares his love for her in all American fashion over an ice cream soda. When Emily's death is revealed at the start of Act 3, it draws attention to the thematic significance of George's life. After her death, George lays down prostrate at Emily's grave. This vividly illustrates Wilder's message that human beings do not fully appreciate life as they live it. While he lies next to Emily's grave, a group of dead souls look on George's prostrate body with confusion and disapproval and Emily asks rhetorically, they don't understand, do they? What she means is that instead of mourning for the loss of his wife, George should be enjoying his life and the lives of those around him before he dies too. Wilder in this way forces the audience to pity George, partly because of the tragedy he has suffered due to Emily's death, but most importantly also because he epitomizes the human tragedy of caring too much about things that cannot be changed. On the other hand, when the audience sees George's pitiable condition, they realize that the dead souls demand that George should stifle his emotions and this is very difficult, if not impossible. In this slide, Wilder implies that perhaps the dead souls don't understand human suffering either. Themes are universal ideas explored in a literary work. The first theme in this play is the impermanence of human life. As the audience watches the play, they realize that the individual human lives in our town are transient. They are influenced greatly by the rapid passage of time. The stage manager often says that time seems to pass quickly for the people in the play. At one point, he does not look at his watch for a while and he misjudges the time. This demonstrates that sometimes even the stage manager or the timekeeper himself falls victim to the passage of time. In the course of the play, Wilder seems to ponder whether human beings truly appreciate the precious nature of transient life. 
the stage manager calls act 1 as daily life. It highlights the artfulness of the value of routine day to day activity. For example, simple acts such as eating breakfast, sending children to school and feeding chickens become subjects of dramatic scenes. Wilder sees significance in such seemingly mundane events. Wilder contrasts this bout of everyday activity with the character's negligence of it. The characters are largely oblivious of the niceties of their lives and tend to accept their state of affairs inertly. The Gibbs and the Webb families hurry through breakfast and the children dash off to school without much attention to one another. They, like the majority of human beings, maintain the flawed assumption that they have indefinite amount of time on earth. Mrs. Gibbs curtails herself from insisting that her husband take her to Paris because she thinks there will always be time to persuade him later. We notice the dead souls in Act 3 highlighting this theme of transience critical of chastising the living for their ignorance and blindness. The dead even view George's grief and prostration upon Emily's grave as pathetic, waste of human time. Instead of being mournful of the dead, they believe the living should enjoy the time they still have on earth. Theatre as a medium perfectly suits Wilder's objective to make Ordinary lives and actions seem extraordinary. As the viewpoint of dead souls parallels the audience's perspective, just as the dead souls distance away from the life, they learn to appreciate daily events in Grover's Corners. In the same way, the audience's perspective renders daily events valuable. The audience has never before witnessed Gibbs's family breakfast, and when this scene is dramatized on the stage, they see it as important. Indeed, every action on the stage becomes noteworthy. From Howie Newsom's delivery of milk to the practice of the town choir. The next theme is the importance of camaraderie or friendship. The inevitable aspect of life is birth and death. Therefore, the most important stage of life is the middle one, which contains the quest for company, for friendship, for love. The fact to consider is that humans have some degree of control over their, this aspect of life. As the play progresses, the audience notice that though the characters may not be fully aware of their doing so, the residents of the Grover's Corners frequently take time out of their days to bond with each other. It can occur through an idle chat with the milkman or a small talk with a neighbor. The most outstanding interpersonal relationship in the play is romance, the courtship and wedding of Emily and George. Through their relationship, Wilder suggests that love epitomizes human life and accomplishment in the face of inevitable advance of time. Romance is no doubt a major feeling in our town, but it is merely the most vibrant among wide range of bonds that human beings are capable of forging. Wilder shows a number of different types of relationships and though some are platonic, all are noteworthy. From the start of Act 1, the stage manager seeks to set up a relationship with the audience which builds a tie between people on stage and the audience off stage. Within the action of the play, the audience witnesses the milkman, the paper boy talking with the members of the Gibbs and the Webb families as they distribute their goods. The children walk to and fro from school in groups or pairs. Mrs. Gibbs and Mrs. Webb, who are next door neighbors, meet in their yards to talk. 
the audience's witness Mr. and Mrs. Webb and Dr. and Mrs. Gibbs in private conversation as Mrs. Gibbs articulates, taint natural to be lonesome. Even the play's title using the collective pronoun our underscores the human desire for community. Many aspects of the play attest to the importance of community and companionship, the welcoming introduction from the stage manager, the audience participation through the placement among the audience of actors within the audience who interact with those on stage and the presence of numerous groups in the play such as the choir, the wedding party, the funeral party and the group of dead souls, all these talk about comradeship or friendship or camaraderie. The next theme is hypocrisy on stage. The play according to Wilder represents everyday life. For example, the events that occur on stage are routine events in real lives of people. Like the milkman delivering milk, children are sent to school, women gossiping in the yard, young people falling in love. But Wilder covers up this appearance of reality with devices that accentuate the deceit of theatre. The stage manager is the most palpable of these devices. Now let us study the motives in the play. What are motives? Motives are recurring structures, contrasts or literary devices that can help to develop and inform the text's major themes. The first one is the different phases of life. The play is divided into three acts which reflect Wilder's division of human life into three parts, birth, love and marriage and death. The play opens at the dawn of a new day which represents literal birth. At the very beginning in act 1, we come to know Dr. Gibbs has just delivered twins. Act 2 informs about George and Emily's courtship and marriage. Act 3 features a funeral and states about the possibilities of life after death. The overall curve of the story carries the audience from the beginning of life to its end. The audience's observation of life of Gibbs and Webb's families get condensed into a few short hours leads them to realize that the human experience while many sided is nevertheless short and valuable. Wilder throughout the play demonstrates how quickly the characters progress from one stage to another. George and Emily marry in act 2 but they are just as tense and childlike as they were in act 1. The second stage of life creeps upon them. This mixture of stages of life reoccur later when in the second stage of Emily's life her marriage is abruptly cut short when she dies in childbirth. The next Next motive is the normal cycles of day and night. While our town spans the course of many years from 1899 to 1913, it also collapses its events into a span of just one day. It opens with the morning scene and ends with the night time scene. Act 1 begins just before dawn and Act 3 ends at 11 pm. The play also metaphorically spans the course of human life tracing the path from the birth of daughter Gibbs's twins in the opening scene to the death of Emily and her funeral in the final scene. The span of life parallels the span of the day, birth is related to dawn, death is related to night. Wilder's attention to natural cycles highlights his themes of the transience of life and the power of time. While a single human life comprises only one finite revolution from birth to death, the world continues to spin, mothers continue to give birth, human beings continue to exist as just one part of the universe. The next motive is 
the break of day or the morning. Morning scenes are very important in this play. Act 1 depicts the regular morning activities of the people. Act 2 shows Gibbs and Webb families in the morning of Emily and George's wedding. Act 3 highlights Emily's return to her morning of the 12th birthday. Despite differences in the perspective of situations, each morning scene appears remarkably alike to the others, which tells about the lack of change in Grover's Corners. In each of these three scenes, Howie Newsom delivers milk, Crowell Boy delivers newspapers. This also shows the stability is a feature of life in the town. At the same time, Wilder shows that it is often leads to the lack of concern as each day appears more or less the same as the earlier one. The townspeople are unsuccessful in observing or realizing the delicate, life-affirming peculiarities that each day brings. What are symbols? Symbols are objects, characters, figures or colors used to represent abstract ideas or concepts. The first symbol in the play is the capsule of time. The stage manager in Act 1 briefly mentions about a time capsule that is being buried in the foundation of a new building at Grover's Corners. The citizens of the town wish to include works of Shakespeare, the constitution, the bible. The stage manager says that he would like to include the copy of our town also inside this time capsule. The time capsule signifies the human desire to keep record of the past. At the same time, it also symbolizes the idea that certain parts of the past ought to be remembered over the others. Wilder challenges this latter notion. He has the stage manager place our town into the capsule so that people opening it in future will not only appreciate the daily lives of the town's people from the past but also value their own daily lives in the future. The opinion of placing the play in the time capsule also carries a symbolic meaning. The fact that our town, the play is actually mentioned within the play our town that is being enacted clearly shows Wilder's objective to break down the wall that divides the world of the play from the world of the audience. He mentions his own play within his play. Wilder accepts that his text is artificial and a literary creation. Even more essential aspect is that the stage manager's wish to put the play into the capsule lends historic significance to the audience's watching of our town. He states that even the current production of the play its sets, its lights, actors and audience is itself a vital detail of life. The next symbol in the play is the church hymn that is blessed be the tie that binds. The choir sings the hymn blessed be the tie that binds in the background of the play three different times throughout the play. This repetition of the song epitomizes Wilder's general concept of stability and custom. However, the Christian hymn primarily emphasizes Wilder's belief that love between human beings is divine in nature. The tie in the hymn's lyrics refers to both the tie between humans and God and the tie between humans themselves. All the three scenes that include the hymn also significantly feature Emily and George, stressing on the tie that binds the two of them together. The first time the song is heard during a choir practice, 
the audience find George and Emily's conversation through their open windows in Act 1. The second time, it is heard during the wedding ceremony in Act 2. The third time, the audience hears during Emily's funeral. As a body is buried, she joins the dead in the graveyard, leaving George behind. By introducing this particular hymn with the play's critical moments, Wilder emphasizes the concepts of companionship as a vital, even heavenly feature of human life. The hymn also adds degree of Christian imagery to the play. But Wilder, for most part, downplays any discussion of Christian symbols. He concentrates on the hymn not because of its suggestion of the fellowship between Christians in particular, but rather because of what it says of human beings in general. Dear students, I hope you have understood what the play Our Town is all about. The significant aspect of this play is we should learn to appreciate our lives and learn to live every day because it is a gift. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this lesson as much as I have enjoyed teaching it to you. Thank you.